Hi everyone, it's Don and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, as cruising is now ramping up one more time and everyone's getting out there, I thought, you know what, what better time to say, hey, let's look at 10 ways to save you money on your cruise. Number one, excursions. Now, I'm one of those people who will book most of my excursions right through the cruise line. It's just convenient and you have that extra security of if something goes wrong, like there's a flat tire on a bus or anything at all, and you're late getting back to the cruise, they guarantee the cruise ship will wait for you if you're on one of their excursions. So that's a really good bonus to pay an extra 10 or $15. However, there are some cruises out there that like the excursions you see, you can do yourself for nothing or, or very, very cheap. I've seen some excursions out there, exclusive beach uh, tour, and it's like $55. So you, okay, you pay the $55, you get it. They put you on a bus and they drive you to the public beach that's about five minutes away from the cruise ship. And they have this little flagged off area just for you. But literally all around you, everywhere else on the beach is the public. It's wide open anybody. And if you would have took a taxi or a little shuttle, it probably would have took cost you $5. So instead of 50 some dollars, a total of $10 return trip. So keep an eye on those types of excursions, those exclusive beaches and things, unless they're traveling to a beach by boat or a long distance away, usually you can get there by maybe even walk. It's literally that close. So I would really keep an eye on your excursions because excursions can be the one thing you can save a lot of money on because they are very pricey, especially in some destinations. Number two, spas. I'm not one for spas. Uh, you know, I don't need to go for spas on a cruise. I don't need to go for facials, uh, you know, but some people absolutely love to go to the spa. One of the things I do think is really worthwhile in a spa is like the thermal suites. If you can get a thermal suite pass for a week or include it in your cabin, if you book a spa cabin on some cruise lines, yeah, that is really worthwhile. It's a good place to get away from noise and relaxation. But if you want to take a spa, if you want to have a treatment or a massage or any of those treatments, uh, I would wait and try and book it on a port day, especially a port if you're not going ashore. Because quite often, because they know almost everybody is off the ship, they will have sales, sometimes up to 60% off the cost of certain treatments. So that would be really good to save some money. If you can save 60% on those types of things, um, something you'd love to do, that's a big saving. But keep in mind, spa employees are also kind of there a little bit to push product on you. For instance, if you get your teeth whitened on a cruise ship, they will also then try and sell you the, the home teeth whitening to keep it up in the future and your skin toning. Well, here, this will keep you in the future after you leave here. You don't want this treatment to be wasted. You have to buy this treatment when you get home so you can use it there. And a lot of the reasons this is happening on cruise ships is not necessarily from the cruise lines. A lot of the employees and spas on cruise ships are run by different companies. They're a company that is kind of like a contract worker on cruise ships. And so it's their job to push their products for that company to make more money. So there can be a little bit of a hard sale uh, towards you if you go to the spa to, but you don't have to buy it. It's not mandatory. If you enjoy the spa, just say thank you, but no thank you. Number three, you know when you're walking around and you get those photo photographers, hey, let me take your photo of you. Click, there you are. You took a photo of you getting on the ship. Took a photo of you on formal night, all dressed up and you pose in front of the backdrop. It's great, it's beautiful, it's wonderful, and it's also expensive. It can be $25 a photo. 
if you want a photo. And it can be $20, $35 a photo if you want the photo plus a thumb drive to bring that digital copy home or a digital copy email to you. So that's per photo. That's not for a whole session. Now, some cruise lines have started offering photo packages where you just pay one price and then any photo that's taken by a photographer on the ship, other than a private session, is included. So if you're one who does like those, those photos, look for one of those deals before you even get on the cruise. You can find it in your cruise planners. However, if you're just going to take a random photo and just remember, they can be expensive on a cruise ship. Room service. Room service is kind of important to me because I work in my room when I'm going. And so I'll sometimes see the final show of the night and then I'll head back to my room and I'll start editing and working. I like room service. So I always try and find a room service if I can that doesn't charge me. Uh, for instance, on my last Princess Cruise, there was no charge for most of the items on the room service. I was charged if I wanted to order a pizza from a different, you know, it's not, not right in the, the main kitchen, it's coming from a different kitchen. Or if I wanted to upgrade to a lobster or something like that, I could get some services like that, extra cost. However, uh, hamburgers, soups, sandwiches, kids, mac and cheese, desserts, French fries, all that stuff was free to deliver to my stateroom. Now, some cruise lines charge you a flat fee, up to $9.95 per order. And some of them now have started putting a limit on the amount of things you can order. So you can order two main menus plus a dessert and a drink, and anything over that counts as a second order, which means you're charged another service fee. So keep that in mind if you're ordering a room service. Not all cruise lines are free. So yeah, maybe it's worthwhile just walking up to the buffet, filling up a buffet tray, and then bringing it down to your room instead of paying that service charge every single time. Speaking of sales and everything, shops. There's, our, there's always shops on a cruise line. Now, some of them are just for souvenirs. You know, you can buy a t-shirt that says the, the destination you're going in, or hobbies, or mugs, and things like that. Those are all souvenirs. Those are fine. Those are good. But then there's the jewelry stores, the watch stores, and all this. They generally don't seem to be a better deal than you can get when you're back on land. They tend to be even more pricey in a way. And it's a lot harder to return something once you've bought it on a cruise ship and gone home. You, you buy a watch, you get your watch, you go home, it doesn't work. Or it breaks right away. And you now what do you do? Most people just soak up the loss and say, well, I learned my lesson. So eh, I would keep a very close eye on watching. Make sure it's a really good deal. Don't be afraid to go online and search what it would cost you at home to buy this exact item or something uh, comparable because prices on ships don't tend to be less than they are on land. And if you do want to buy something on land, this happened on my Majestic Princess trip. A lady came up to me and she really liked this certain necklace that was in one of the jewelry shops. And this was on the second night of the cruise. And I said, she says, she, she's going to go down tomorrow morning and she's going to buy it when they open. And I said, don't buy it. I said, do not buy that. Wait till the final sea day of the cruise. She said, why? I said, because a lot of these shops will have sales on the final day and you can save a lot more money. I saw her on the final day and guess what? She saved 55% than what she would have paid had she bought it on that second day of the cruise. So if you're going to buy something in the shops, maybe wait till that final day when they're trying to get rid of merchandise and they know it's the last day that you're on that ship. Well, that's five tips. Before I get into my last five tips that can save you money, let me just invite you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already to be informed when I put out a new video. That's all it does. It doesn't sign you up for anything and you'll be informed of all the cruise news, anything upcoming on new ship departures, any change of protocols and tips and tricks that could save you money. And I would really, really appreciate it. Another thing people don't realize, up in the buffet, they always have these stands where you can go over, you can get your water refilled, you can get juice, you can get coffees. 
and teas in almost every cruise buffet and it costs you no extra money. But if you go to some of the coffee shops and coffee bars on board, even if you're just ordering a regular coffee, you can get charged. And if you are one of those people who like to have five or six coffees a day, well, maybe that trip up to the buffet can save you quite a bit of money per day on a cruise. So don't be afraid to use the buffet to get your juices and get your coffees instead of paying for it in a coffee bar. While we're on the subject of drinks, let's go with number seven, drink packages. If you are a non-drinker and don't drink, getting a drink package makes no sense. Getting a drink package if you were a minimum drinker, like myself. I was just on a two weeks worth of cruising. Had I bought the drink package, it would have been well over $700 American, well over that. Uh, my entire bill, including buying snacks, a, a bear, a cruise ship ornament, uh, and buying drinks on board, et cetera, and buy, was $300 for my entire two weeks. And that's including buying all the drinks that I did buy on the ship. So it, it would make no sense whatsoever to buy that drink package. Really price it out. If you're only going to have two or three drinks a day, which is what most people would have, then the drink packages do not pay for themselves and you should pay for them as you go. This one should be an easy one. A lot of people say, I'm waiting for those sales. I'm going to wait till close to my cruise and then I'm going to try and book it and get a sale. Here's another, if, if there's an itinerary and a cruise you really want to go on, book early. The farthest out you can, the better off you will be. And here's the easy reason why. You will never pay more than that price you just booked. So here's let's just round it off. You book a cruise for $1,000 and it's two years away. If that cruise goes up to $2,500, you're still paying $1,000. If that cruise goes down to $500, you can get it refared at the lower price. So now it's $500. You save $500. It doesn't pay to wait longer and longer and longer because as cruise ships fill up and this is this is post pandemic and pre pandemic all right if once cruise ships fill up the prices start going up for those cabins because there's less and less availability so they know they can spend more money to get more people in there so the best way to save money is to book book early and then just watch those prices and if they go down get it repaired. I've repaired some cruises four and five times before they ever get to sale. And it drops down the price every single time. Also, while you're doing it, don't just assume the cabin types are cheaper. For instance, a solo cabin would be inside cabin would be cheaper than an inside cabin for two people. Doesn't always work that way. Many times I'll go on Norwegian who has beautiful solo cabins in some of their ships, but they're more expensive than just booking a regular inside cabin, which is bigger by almost double in size. Why would I do that? Well, one thing about the solo cabins is they have their own private little area to get on the ship. And they, they sometimes have a bar, like a little lounge area for only those solo cruisers. If that's important to you, then maybe that extra money is worth it. If it's not important to you, then maybe the size is worth it. This goes for balconies too. Some solo balcony cabins are almost the exact same price as a regular balcony cabin. So why would you want to book into the smaller cabin just because it has the word solo in front of it? So don't assume. I've also booked balconies cheaper than insides because there was only like two insides left on the ship yet there were 50 or 60 balconies left on the ship. So the balconies were actually more expensive than the inside cabins. Same goes for Ocean View. It always pays to really check it out. Also, check, don't be afraid to check out suites. Uh, I've learned this myself because some suites come with a lot of perks. And when you add those perks, 
some of those perks are things that you're going to do anyway. Free Wi-Fi, oh, I was gonna get Wi-Fi. Uh, free drink package, well, I was gonna buy a drink package. Free onboard credits, well, okay, that's spending money off my cruise that I'm gonna spend anyway. And once you add all those up, then see the difference between the regular cabin you were gonna book and the sweet cabin you were gonna book. And who knows, like I just learned when I went on the, the Celebrity Edge, I literally spent about four or $500 more and I ended up in a suite with all the perks than a regular balcony. Double the size for $400 for a week. I thought was well worth it. So don't be afraid to check out suite prices and all the perks that come with them as well. And lastly, number 10, just a quick one I wanna show is if you are looking at a, look at the floor plans because you can often save money in a way. And here's what I mean by that. It's, it's you're gonna get the same size cabin, but you can get a much larger balcony. If you look at some cruise ships, you can see where it kind of, they'll go along like this on the side of the ship and then they'll jut out and then they'll go out a little bit, then they'll go back in again. And this is all part of a design on the ship. But where they jut out and jut in, you tend to have larger balconies. There are some balconies that are double in size than a regular balcony. And if you look at that and you go online and you check out the cabin and it's available, quite often it's the exact same price as the balcony cabin, like the smaller balcony cabin. So yeah, I will book a larger balcony cabin at the same price every single time because nothing is better than being able to spread out on your balcony especially in a location with, like, can you imagine the Norwegian Fjords, Fjords uh, Alaska, Hawaii, Tahiti, destinations like that, Japan, with beautiful ocean views from your balcony and having all that extra space to spread out. Well, there you go. That's 10, 10 things that could save you money and to keep an eye on as you start up cruising again going into 2022 and the end of 2021. And I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. We'll see more tips, more tricks, more travel blogs from around the world. Hit that subscribe button until next time. Have yourself a safe and a great vacation.